Since the 80s, different states began requiring DNA samples for prisoners. I believe in the initial stages, samples were only taken from inmates with sexual or violent crimes. But the list of crimes eligible for DNA testing was eventually extended. The following is the list, and as you can see, there's quite a few crimes that were added. At some point, I think in the early 90s, they gave all of us who were in prison a sheet of paper explaining that they would be coming around to take samples. At the time, I personally didn't think much of it. For me, it was just something else that the facility in Albany was doing to annoy us. I didn't understand to see the bigger picture behind it. When they finally did come around, they would come to our cell, have us come to the gate, and open our mouths. Then they would place a swab tip into our mouth and rub it around a couple of times on our inner cheek, and then they would take it and put it into a test tube. I remember while this was taking place, hearing a lot of commotion going on in the cell block by other inmates. But that was common. You always had certain guys who would just buck the system no matter what. What I didn't know at the time and later found out was all the commotion was due to certain inmates refusing to supply their DNA. But their refusal only lasted so long because the courts ruled that their DNA could be taken by force. And that's exactly what the facility did. They would go to the inmates that refused, ask them again to give their DNA, and when they wouldn't comply, several correction officers would enter their cell, pin the inmate down, and a nurse would collect the DNA, either by swab or taking their blood. In the following years, there were so many guys that were packed up and sent down to court to be re-indicted on new cases. Most of those cases were sex crimes involving rapes. However, it wasn't only limited to sex crimes, but a variety of other crimes as well. So those same guys that were refusing to give up their DNA were fully aware of the crimes that they committed. So naturally, that's why they were putting up a fight. I found out that all of our DNA was added to the New York State DNA data bank. Since the database inception, there was an estimated 30,000 forensic samples taken from crime scenes in New York alone. New York State collected over 300,000 samples of DNA. A chart from 2009 shows the following statistics. 7,980 matches were made, and they had 1,384 national DNA hits. The following chart shows the percentage of the hits. 44% were for sexual assault, 30% was for burglary, 9% were for homicides, 8% was for robbery, and other crimes made up 9%. In addition, inmates linked to crimes through DNA had approximately 11 prior arrests, five prior convictions, and more interestingly, is 83% of the inmates linked to sexual cases were in the data bank for non-sex-related crimes. When you think about it, most of the time DNA comes into play is in sex crimes. It's been a key factor in several cold cases to convict people who for years have gotten away with the crimes. Conversely, DNA also played a major role in exonerating innocent people, to date, 375 people have been exonerated, inmates who have served a total of 5,284 years. 21 of those people were on death row, and sadly, 44 of those 375 had pled guilty to crimes they didn't commit. 190 of those cases were handled by the Innocent Project, which I feel is a great thing. Earlier today, I was explaining to someone what we went through in prison with all the DNA testing, and I wanted to share it with you. So I hope you enjoyed hearing it, and I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their Sunday.